Hello, I'm Janice Kraft. Welcome to Upfront. Our topic today is encouragement. Encouragement of your dreams, your goals, your focus. Encouragement can determine which direction a person takes in life. Encouragement is very important. Here today to discuss his experience on encouragement, dreams, focus, and goals is Nathaniel Mack III, attorney at law. Welcome, Nathaniel. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Nathaniel, you're a Baylor alumni. You played football at Baylor. You attended St. Louis Law School in St. Louis, Missouri. You came back to San Antonio and took the bar at St. Mary's University, passed it the first testing. That's a lot of focus, dreams, and goals to, to maintain. So share with the audience, first of all, how did you maintain your focus through the career, through school, through football? Because everyone has their different ways of maintaining their focus. From your experience, how did you maintain your focus? Well, uh, it was definitely a challenge. Uh, it's never an easy task to uh, eliminate distractions in your life, especially at that young of an age. Uh, you know, coming out of high school, uh, being away from my parents for the first time in my life, uh, being around a lot of other young people uh, from all over the, the country, all over the world for that matter. Uh, you know, for one, you definitely want to uh, have certain people around you that have the same focus, have the same goals. I think that's very important. You want to surround yourself with like-minded individuals. Now, I will tell you, playing football, there are a lot of uh, interesting characters on the team. <laughs> uh, so there's plenty of distractions, that's for sure. But uh, you want to uh, keep your circle small. Um, you know, it's, it's great to have friends that you can trust, friends that you can depend on. And I think as long as you surround yourself with people who have the same focus, have the same drive, uh, the, same, uh, the same goals, and the same morals, uh, I really think that uh, is the key to, uh, to staying grounded and, and staying focused. Um, you know, there will be times where you'll hang out on the weekends, but uh, you can't be partying every weekend if you want to be successful and get good grades in school. That's just the way it is. Um, so, you know, just making sure you are responsible, uh, making sure that uh, you understand what's most important why you're in school in the first place, uh, I, think, uh, I think you'll be okay. Very good. So maybe it names a couple of steps or, or more on how would a person uh, maintain the distractions because you know you have someone's calling you're trying to study uh, they, they said you're coming over they want to hang out and and of course you want you want to balance you don't want to have all, all work and no play yeah. but it's very important to have that balance you know you you want to have fun you know like laugh to do a good like a medicine so so you want to have fun and laugh and you don't you don't want to be dull but you know you still want to maintain that focus and sometimes it takes you have to do you write things down or say I'm determined or do you like leave and go somewhere else and how do you maintain everyone has different ways of, of maintaining distractions because you have to you have to have a plan to me I think because if you don't have a plan then you will be get very distracted you said football distractions and and you know studying can be distractions it's just distractions just life distractions and you're going you can have them you can go to uh, the grocery store and see somebody in there okay let's hang out and we're going to go here and drive here we're going to pay for it all you know so you have all kinds of distractions so could you name some steps for the audience for maybe the younger ones or, or any age because everyone has distractions age has no bearing on it how would name some steps at home where you would maintain some of the distraction what would you do or what did you do or what would a person do absolutely so first of all you want to map out your your goals and uh, these can be long term or short term uh, for me, I would map out my goals on a weekly basis. Uh, each day I would know what I needed to do and I would designate certain times to accomplish those tasks for the day. So waking up in the morning, I knew I had class certain times. I would designate times to be in the library to study. I would designate times to uh, hang out with my friends, uh, designate times to work out, be in the gym, of course, practice. Uh, they tell you when to be there, but uh, you know, you have to schedule certain things around your, your obligations. But if you're organized and you keep everything kind of planned out, it's a lot easier to tell someone, hey, I can't hang out right now because you know what you have to do already, as opposed to just going off of a whim um, and just living life, you know, carefree, which is fun sometimes, <laughs> but uh, it's hard to take care of business uh, when distractions come up because you don't have something necessarily planned for that particular time and I'll, I'll push it back to later next thing you know it's you know 12 o'clock at night you're tired you didn't do what you wanted to do with that day and and that can go on day after day until you actually kind of 
uh, anchor down and come up with a, a plan. You know, buy yourself a daily planner, buy yourself a calendar and just write down, this is what I wanna get done every day. Um, and that develops a pattern of responsibility of organization and it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to stay focused and, and eliminate some of those distractions. Very good. When you were talking, I was thinking about peer pressure, peer pressure. We yes. have peer pressure at all ages. All it, does, the time. it doesn't matter. Yeah. So how do you handle that cordially when someone that, that's just your friend and they, they still insist? How do you handle that without hurting their feelings or do you think about, well, well, it's too bad. How do you handle it cordially uh, rejecting them? Because you have to reject them. Otherwise, they'll keep coming and coming and coming for the peer pressure, because peer pressure is there. And sometimes we do succumb to peer pressure. Yes. We say, okay, well, next time I'm not gonna do it, and I succumb again, next time I'm not gonna do it. So how do you buckle down and uh, you know, be cordial at the same time? Well, peer pressure is around us at all times. Uh, it was around me in high school, and I'm a lot older now, and it's still there. So, uh, you know, honestly, if certain people are truly your friends, they're going to understand when you tell them you can't do something because you have to study or because you have to work or uh, in my instance, I have a trial coming up or depositions I need to prepare for. If they're truly my friends, they're gonna understand that. They're not going to put pressure on me or make me feel bad for not uh, having the time to go out to the movies with them or go out of town with them. Um, so I think it's just people who really don't truly care for you that are not going to understand that you have priorities and you have certain goals in mind and just sometimes you, you can't do those things. So uh, don't be afraid to say no, first of all. Don't be afraid to say no. You've got your goals, you've got your uh, plans mapped out and not everyone's gonna fall within that plan, unfortunately. Uh, that's why I said, you know, you're gonna have a, a small group of true friends that are gonna understand your goals, your dreams and have your, your best uh, intentions at heart. So, uh, you know, young folks or, or folks in general, just don't be afraid to say no to people when you have priorities that uh, are just more important. That's very good. Another thing uh, jumped out at me when you said friends. You know, uh, some people, guess how do you determine who your friends are? If they really care about you and they will want the best for you. Absolutely. They're, they're genuine friends. And I know sometimes as some of the peer pressure starts in again, and you still want the friends that you thought were friends, you still want to hang on to them. But sometimes along the way, you do have to let go friends a as you go. Yes, you have to let go. And, and that's, uh, it's a hard lesson at times. Um, there's friends I've had to let go uh, from high school, from, from college, we, we took different paths. And that's going to happen. You're gonna have friends when you're younger that you're not gonna have throughout your entire life. And you're gonna meet new people, and you're gonna develop new relationships. Um, that's just life. And at the end of the day, you know, just stay focused on what's most important to you uh, people will come and go out of your life. It's going to happen. But as long as you stay focused, that's really all that, that matters at the end of the day. And those people that are truly friends, uh, I believe will be there in the end. Very good. And I, I was thinking about recreation. So when you take time out and you're focusing, you're studying, uh, what type of recreation would that would be that you would like to do? I mean, because I know you were in, in St. Louis, it's snow, yeah, you know, snow. skiing, and then setting it, you need a beach. So, <laughs> you know, those temptations and, you know, people come to you. But uh, what's the recreation that you, you uh, that helped you? Sure. Because recreation, it does help you. It kind of relaxes you. Absolutely. It's not only just having fun, but it releases tension um, yes. in a lot of ways, and it helps you. It's very advantageous, it's not just fun only, but it just helps your body from head to toe, not realizing how the exercise helps your whole body. Yes. So what recreation helped you? Sometimes you can just go to the, the box and just box something, in, and that <laughs> helps get the tension off, and then you go back to studying. Yeah. And sometimes people rather go to the beach, you run around. So what helped you? Uh, well, you're 100% correct on, on needing a balance in your life. Uh, you don't want to all be work-based. You want to balance that with leisure activities, with time with your family, with your friends. <clears throat> that's always important you know even uh, now uh, as an attorney uh, it's very important to stay balanced in your life because you can find yourself uh, constantly working and not actually you know relaxing and, and letting stress go uh, getting back to st. Louis there was a lot of snow uh, fortunately not as many temptations in st. Louis uh, no beach no mountains uh, I mean you can go down to the, uh, the arch, of course, go to some baseball games, great baseball city. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I went to the gym. That was my number one way to release stress and tension working out uh, for a few reasons. One, I look better when I go to the gym. 
and that's always a good thing. Uh, <laughs> secondly, you feel better, you know, just health wise, you have more energy throughout the day. Uh, you just have more drive and, um, you know, it's a great way to get your mind off of the bugs, get your mind off of just the stresses of life. So, uh, you know, whether it's lifting weights or uh, playing basketball, swimming, uh, doing some kind of aerobic class, you know, just uh, getting those endorphins going are very important and uh, I think is pivotal to a uh, successful uh, endeavor in whatever you do. Oh, that's a good point because listen, the audience is listening to you. Uh, it's very good for the whole body and for, for the brain and and for just from the from the head to toe as I was saying earlier yes. so if someone think of some steps that you know say well how can I, I, I decompress or something and just go to the gym whatever's good for me it's good for the gym it helps me when I go to the gym it, it yes. relieves a lot of stress also and like I said some people something else some reading may help some people they may be comforted when they read and they just relax absolutely, absolutely. You, you need that to say you need that balance yeah and it doesn't have to be the gym or um, even any kind of exercise I mean going to the movies is, is a great way to kind of escape um, I love watching sports as well watching a ball game um, reading a book uh, if you like writing, um, you know, just any other hobby you might have, you know, the most important thing is just have a balance of your work life and your, your private leisurely life. Spend time with your family, spend time with your friends. I love to travel. If you can uh, get away for a day, you know, go to a park or uh, go hiking somewhere, you know, as long as you kind of escape the stresses of life and keep that balance, that's going to be very important to uh, your all around well-being. That's true because uh, uh, traveling is, is broadens your horizon. I love it. You know? oh, that's my favorite. And you, you rejuvenate. Like some people take a break. It's like, don't take a break. Work through the whole thing. But it's best to take a break yeah. because it helps come back and you are a better worker. It helps you uh, relax and you, your, your brain gets better all overall. So take a break. And, and when you travel, like you said, it goes, it broadens your horizon. You yes. come back and you have a different outlook. And then you kind of run out of it and you go back and travel again. Yes. And you run out of it and you go back and travel again. You keep wanting to go experience it because all the experience, there's so much out there to experience. It's a big world. It's a, it's I a recommend big world. anyone who <clears throat> has never really traveled and has the opportunity to do so. Um, that's what I enjoy doing when I have the time, whether it's uh, you know in the US or, or abroad. Um, but that's definitely a great way for me to escape you know, my world and um, yeah, you know, you want to work and, and, and then sometimes you're going to hit a, a dead end or you're going to, uh, you know, get frozen in your ideas and you're going to want to hit the reset button. So just get away for a while and, and come back with some new ideas, some new energy, breath of fresh air and, um, you know, continue on. Very good. We talked a little bit about goals and, and keeping focus. Let's talk about some dreams. OK, so uh, encourage one on dreams. Well, and I'm thinking of dreams. Most people have more than one dream. You know, dream big, but lots of people have lots of dreams. They, they choose one. And sometimes if you don't get the opportunity to, to exercise that dream, you can go to the other dream. Because I believe everybody has lots of dreams and goals. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they let distractions get in the way and they need to make a list and, and detail those items so they won't get distracted because the dreams are there. But the dreams is just there if you, don't, if you don't put action to it. So you need to put action to those dreams. So. Think of some ways that you can share with the audience to put actions in some of those dreams. And uh, also, you can, your dreams, you can try your dreams at any age. You know, if you're not able to, uh, to ability to do those things, you can coach, or maybe you want to uh, be a basketball player, or maybe you want to play basketball, or, 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 or so, and, and if you get older and maybe you're not able to do some of the things, you can coach, you can write a book on it, you can do so many things. Your dreams can still, as long as you're alive, you, uh, there's a plan for you. As long as you're alive, there's a plan for you. So you can still continue on and not, you know, as long as you have the ability to do it. Yes. And most of the times, you, most, most people uh, statistically have the ability to do it. There's some that don't, but you can do something, you know. So how would you uh, encourage someone to, to hold on to their dreams? Even if they have one dream and they just go to another dream, there's so many out there. Uh, that have so many different types of dreams Absolutely. and they're still there they uh, i believe god put a dream in there for each person for their heart and and each person is their own individual dream and once you determine what that is to go for it and no matter what age sometimes it could take decades yeah. sometimes it, you you can be younger and you say like, this is what i want you can be uh, uh the 10 20 30 40 you can be whatever age Absolutely. but that dream is in there and, and when you think about it and you realize what it is it's so it's just so great to me it just rejuvenating to think about going out there and trying that dream. You never know unless you really try. 
Okay, so think of some ways that some person could uh, try their dreams. Should they uh, just travel? Travel be one, because I did that uh, one of my dreams. I will not then travel and encourage me to, to, to pursue that dream, to keep that dream up. Think of some ways that person should, that you, from your experience, a person would want to continue uh, their dreams, pursue their dreams. Sure. Well, uh, like you said, you're never too young or too old to fulfill your destiny. Uh, and I truly believe that. Um, whether you're a child, whether you're uh, someone who has already had children, uh, you can always get out there and fulfill a dream that you've always had or that has developed within you. Um, the first step I would take is, of course, uh, figure out exactly what it is that I want to do, and then think about the steps that it's going to take to get there. Because like you said, uh, dreams without actions, uh, I mean, it, it's fruitless, it's, it's worthless. You're never going to accomplish it. It's just gonna be a thought, it's gonna be a waste of energy. <laughs> uh, but you have to think about, okay, what strategically are the steps that I can take to accomplish uh, my goals. So of course with me, and I can give, use myself as an example because it's the easiest, um, you know, getting to the point where, uh, you know, I'm an attorney and, and I have my own firm. Um, it takes time and that's one thing I want everyone to know. Whatever your dreams are, whatever it is you want to accomplish, you have to be patient. Uh, nothing uh, beneficial in your life, nothing great in your life will come easy. You have to work for it, you have to go through adversity, you have to fight for it. And you know, that's something that uh, I want everyone to know because oftentimes people have dreams and they, they uh, face some obstacles, they face some adversity and, and they give up. And uh, I hate to hear those stories, so I'm always wanting to motivate and inspire people like yourself and you know, like you're doing in the community. And um, you know, I want people to know that it's not always easy, but map out a strategic plan and stick with that plan. It's not gonna go perfect. There's going to be obstacles, there's going to be adversity, but stick with it. And if you truly want to accomplish that goal, you're not gonna let anything stop you or anyone stop you. Um, but it's not always easy. And I don't think people are always uh, preaching that. They're preaching you can accomplish your dreams, but they're not preaching the fact that it's not going to come easily. It's not like always like a miracle. Oh, you, you want it and that's it. You no. Know, you get some things like that, but most of the times, and even they worked hard. I'm sure they practiced. And they even voice. had adversity. Yes, yeah. that's true. That's true. There's going to be obstacles uh, involved, but uh, the first thing I would do was just map out a plan because it can be overwhelming to think about your dreams and you know how am I going to accomplish this this great task that I put before myself um, I was overwhelmed many times thinking about it but if you map it out step by step you're able to process it easier you're able to understand okay I'm gonna do this first you do that and then you go into the next step and before you know it you're a step or two away from getting to where you want to be so um, I think that's the first step uh, and then also understanding that it's not going to come easy, but it's the fight that makes it so, uh, so beneficial, makes it so gratifying, the fact that you were able to overcome those obstacles. Very good, very good. Um, who inspired you along the way? Um, the most, a uh, couple, most inspirations, you know, um, that helped you, you know, get where you are. Sure. Uh, there's a, a few people. Uh, definitely my parents, uh, my mother and father. Uh, my father is from the inner city of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, my mother is from uh, the east side of San Antonio. Uh, so, you know, just seeing how they live their lives uprightly and how they've overcome certain obstacles and adversity, uh, which is a theme that you, you face in life many times. Uh, but just uh, the example they set for me uh, is what gave me the foundation to accomplish you know the things that i did and and the ability to um, understand what's most important in life um, also my grandfather uh, my namesake my, my father's father who um, you know set a great example as well and of course passed it down to my father who passed it on to me um, and hopefully i can pass that on to, to future generations as well but uh, he, he led a great example uh, for our family uh, of course, Dr. King is someone that um, I cherish great, greatly as well, and uh, I think is an, an American icon and hero, uh, the examples he set. Um, 
So, you know, those are definitely people that um, have helped shape who I am today. Uh, of course, all my family, uh, just the inspiration my family has been in general. Uh, you know, I have a great family, so I'm always very thankful for having them in my life. And then, of course, just being grounded in Christ. Um, that's the most important thing, and that's something I definitely wanted to mention. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for, uh, you know, my faith and um, just the strength that I've been given, the opportunities I've been given that I don't deserve. And, uh, you know, but the, the mercy and grace of God has put me in this position, and, um, you know, I want to use those blessings to bless others. So, uh, yeah. So, so giving back and... And people think sometimes when they're blessed, when they're blessed, they continue that and make that like a ripple effect and, and, bless, and bless others. Yes. And it just continues and continues. Absolutely. I'm involved in the uh, Boys and Girls Club here in San Antonio. And, uh, you know, I love being around young folks, love inspiring and encouraging young folks to uh, accomplish their goals, accomplish their dreams. Um, I love igniting that fire within them and just letting them know that, you know, you can be anything you want to be. Don't listen to, to people, naysayers, people saying negative things. Um, you know, don't listen to uh, doubters and just stay focused and, and know that if I can do it, you can do it. So just, you know, being a blessing to others and, and just spreading, uh, you know, that confidence uh, amongst young folks, I think this is important. Yeah, because it's a children are our future and they, they watch us and that's the way um, they, they, they take their, uh, their strength are from other people and, and their, their path away from, from other people. They, they look at other people and people don't and some adults don't realize or uh, maybe some uh, siblings don't realize it that <clears throat> they're being watched yeah. and people are watching them. Yes. And their families watching them and they're our future. Yes. And so that's what, you know, what helps the world now is, what, is the future. Absolutely. The children are like a sponge. Mm -hmm. uh, even when you don't uh, <clears throat> realize that they're watching your every move, um, they're looking to see how you talk, what you say, how you dress, what, you know, <laughs> music you listen to, the food you eat. So, <laughs> you know, I'm the oldest of four. So I, I learned early on, you know, to set a good example and just to always uh, live your life like someone is watching you because you never know and uh, they are the future and, and they're only going to go as far as you prepare them so it's important to give them uh, an opportunity to be successful and, and take uh, this role to the next level. Very good. The old saying garbage in garbage out yeah. and so that's what happens if it, you wonder well, why did they come out well it had to be in you in order to come out right. you know right. and so they listening to you and they Spurge out this this garbage, and you wonder why. Well, what'd you get that from? Well, I heard it from somewhere. <laughs> I heard it from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And and just because there are a person's adult, doesn't mean that they still should display that to a child. And say, well, okay, you, you can't. It's okay. I can do it because I'm an adult, but you can't. And they they don't quite understand that. Right. And then, and because they don't understand that, they still not going to listen to that. They are just going to go by what they see. Because you can you can share something with someone. And you know, tell them about something, but your actions of what's going to, you know, it's kind of like love is a verb. Right. You know, yes, I love you, I care for you, but how are you treating me? Right. You know, are you treating me with respect? Are you treating me with love, like you say you do? So they're watching all of that. Absolutely. And so that that's very important. That's a great song, by the way. DC Talk. Love oh, is a verb. Oh, love is a verb. <laughs> that's what I thought love, of. Really? Great song. Love, love is action, and, and it is, and in, in so many ways, and people don't 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 realize that. You know, it's like, hey, well, I just. Um, see you uh, in a couple of years and then I, I really love you but then they near but they don't they don't participate in your lives and Absolutely. and so as someone that's your friend they want to be a part of your life and they, they want to love you know so yes. and the more that they have uh, the love of God in them, the one they want to love someone else because he is love right. he doesn't sound like love doesn't look like love doesn't act like love he is love right. and so and then you want to love other people you know, and this love is, is it's, it surpasses so so many things when it's, it's just true love. Absolutely. And, and, and children know when, when you're being authentic. They, yes. can, they can kind of tell. They can detect it better than, than some adults. They can. They can. Yeah, they really love, can. Love uh, opens up a lot of opportunities and a lot of doors. Uh, you know, when people see you, uh, you know, with your positive spirit, you know, with a smile on your face, like you always have, <laughs> um, you know, that spreads and you never know what kind of day someone's having and when they see you smile and when they see you being kind to them and saying positive things you can change their day or, or their life you never know so uh, i think living your life with, with love being at the forefront is uh, is essential 
Very good. Appreciate it very much. I, I want to, uh, anything else you want to um, expound on before I conclude it with encouragement? I just want uh, everyone out there who has dreams, who has goals, who has um, desires to never give up. Uh, the position that I'm in was not easy. Um, there were times where, you know, I wanted to give up and, um, you know, I was alone in a room just thinking about my life and uh, what direction it was going in. But, uh, you know, I, I stayed with it and, uh, you know, with God's strength, I was able to, to get to this point. But it took a lot of patience, it took a lot of discipline and uh, it took a lot of hard work and, and people who were willing to lend a hand to me and uh, open up doors and opportunities for me to get to this point. So um, stay with your goal, whatever it might be. Don't ever give up. And, um, you know, as long as you understand that and you have a, a mapped out plan, you know exactly what you need to do, just go do it. Very good. Thank you much, very much, Nathaniel Mack. Thank you for me. For coming as my guest. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, I want to uh, expound on encouragement right in conclusion. Encouragement helps a lot. And with encouragement, you can accomplish your dreams and goals at any age. So don't be dissuaded by, by your age, uh, whether young or older. So you can accomplish, you can, because you can do all things through Christ for strengthening. You can do it, you know. So think about that. Thanks for watching up front. This is Janice Kraft. Have a good evening.